Ikakenewa viewers, welcome to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses on current affairs pertaining to Africa. Today we shall be focusing on a positive aspect. My name is Case Kiwinda. Last year, Southern Africa had to come to terms with El Nino. El Nino caused a severe drought in Southern Africa, which completely destroyed the livelihood in terms of the crops that were being grown in the area. This got me thinking. I mean, there's a region in West to East Africa called the Sahel region, which has been dealing with drought ever since as far back as the 1980s. So I'm, I was pretty sure that they were finding ways of making sure that they could feed their populations with their own type of agricultural um, methods. So I had a closer look. The Sahel region is a massive piece of land, which is 1000 kilometers wide and has a span of 5,400 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean reaching the Red Sea. It covers the following countries. Senegal, Mauritania, Central Mali, Burkina Faso, Algeria, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Sudan, South Sudan, Eritrea, Cameroon, Central African Republic, and Ethiopia. Now in the 1980s, along with this drought around the same time, a president rose in one of these Sahel regions that was enigmatic, charismatic, and had a vision. Now normally when there's a coup, it takes on a, it brings on a leader that is sort of imposed on the people and not really loved or not really liked but this was not the case this this leader was loved by the people in fact the coup was very much supported within a country called Burkina Faso today it was first called Upper Volta but he changed the name to Burkina Faso and this coup leader that I'm talking about is no other than Thomas Sankara loosely translated from Jula to English Burkina Faso means land of the free man and this is basically, I guess, the whole slogan around which uh, the ideology of Thomas Sankara is based on. Sadly, his reign was short-lived because he was assassinated four years into his reign. But during those four years, he made sure that he, he made a very big impact on his country. You see, he, re he refused aid from countries from the West and made sure that they were going to be self-sustainable. And to be able to do that, he had to make sure that they produced their own food. Sounds simple, right? So there were a lot of feuding warlords at the time that had lots of land in Burkina Faso and they were not really taking care of the land. So what he did is he took that land from them, redistributed it along the, the locals and helped them in terms of uh, farming that wheat on that land properly. And wheat production doubled within a space of no time, making sure that they could, not, they could be self-sustainable indeed. Thomas Sankara also halted further desertification of land in his country and in his lifetime he made sure that there were about 10 million trees planted. He also had plans for the Sahel region to stop further desertification and this plan became known as the Great Green Wall. It was first suggested in the 1980s, later it kind of died out and then in 2005 it re-emerged, uh, mentioned by well, now again the current president of Nigeria, uh, Mr. Buhari. The Great Green Wall initiative is no other than making sure that the land is arable again, where people can grow their crops and that there will be forests, etc, etc. Eleven countries are in on this initiative, namely Burkina Faso, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Mauritania, Mali, Nigeria, Niger, Senegal, Sudan and Chad. Now fighting desertification is all well and good, but how is it actually done? There wasn't really any explanation on that in any of the things I read about the Great Green Initiative, or the Great Green Wall, sorry. So I had to look at how they did it in Burkina Faso, because as I told you before, Thomas Sankara managed to stop or halt desertification in Burkina Faso itself. Now the method they use is an old method called ZAI, Z-A-I. And basically what they do is they uh, use a shovel or an axe, break up the ground and dig a hole. And then they fill that hole with compost, 
as well as uh, trees, seeds, sorry, tree seeds, uh, or millet and sorghum seeds. And uh, during rain season, that hole gets filled up with water. And for the rest of the year, there's enough uh, moisture and nutrients to grow whatever is in there. Now I was pretty certain that this could not be the only method to make land fertile again. And sure enough, when I read a bit more, I found out about this ancient method that was being used in Liberia and Ghana, where they mix waste from the kitchen with charcoal and throw it onto the soil, which becomes then carbon rich and uh, very dark. And then this soil is even dubbed African dark earths. Nicholas Ings also found another method. He co-owns uh, Davy Organics in South Africa. And basically they use earthworms to fix the soil. Now the earthworms eat the soil and later on what comes out of it, uh, you know, the excretion is later on called vermicast. Uh, this process takes about three months, depending on the temperature, the humidity and the amount of earthworms. Dave Lee Organic's main customers grow macadamia trees, but of course vermicast can be used for all kinds of crops. Uh, they sell the bags in 40 liter bags and sell it for about $7.50 per bag and one bag can service about 20 trees. I guess today's main message is that modern farming has been focusing too much on growing the plant, forgetting that it is the, so the soil that brings the nutrients and therefore the soil needs to be treated as well. And luckily enough there are methods, ancient methods that is even, that make sure that this soil can be treated and we can fight climate change but the, it is up to us to make sure that this can, can happen. So that's the positive message of today. Don't let drought stop you from farming. Come on, go up and go, go out there, go farm. My name is Case Kiwinda. You can subscribe to me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.